Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series that I'm doing about using AI in the Unreal Engine. And at this point, we've got up to uh, a point where I really should talk about navigation and a thing called the NavMesh. Uh, so, um, just to let you know where I am, I've uh, got a third person template map. Uh, if you've been following on through the videos in the in sequence, then you'll have seen me create a um, a controllable character, and I've got a controller. I'm not actually going to use them because this uh, video is more about explanation. Uh, so it's useful if characters can uh, find their way around whatever um, props and uh, barriers there are in in your level, um, and. Uh, doing pathfinding in AI can be fairly complex. There is some good news and some bad news and then some good news. So the good news is that, that Unreal, like lots of these jobs, Unreal can do it for us. Um, the bad news, which isn't really that bad news, is that we've got the third-person template and we don't have it set up in the third-person template. Uh, but the good news is that it's really easy to set up. Okay, So there are uh, obviously... Uh, there's there's one thing that you need for pathfinding to happen, and that is some code which will do the pathfinding. So Unreal have provided that. The other thing that you need is a map of the level, so that the um, so that the character and the and the AI can know where they can go and where they can't go, uh, and that takes the form of a mesh, and it's called a nav mesh. And you might have heard this term before, nav mesh. So meshes are uh, sets of triangles which are all connected together. Uh, you'll have come across the term static mesh, which is used for objects on the screen. So, like these stairs here are a static mesh. This character and the other character have got what's called skeletal meshes. But all a mesh means is a connection of triangles. Usually, it's to show an object. Um, but the nav meshes, that's slightly different. Uh, so as I said, the third person uh, template doesn't have a nav match automatically in it, but they're really easy to add to your project. Uh, so on the uh, right hand side here, we're going to go to volumes, um, so which gives us an invisible box. Uh, we're going to give it an invisible box saying, uh, what are the limits of uh, where the nav mesh should be created? Um, and the other good news, of course, is that Unreal will actually create the nav mesh for us. Uh, so the volume we need is the nav mesh bounds volume. I'm just going to drag one of those into the world. And if the nav mesh only covered this little box here, that wouldn't be very useful. Um, in fact, tell you what, uh, I'll display the nav mesh. Uh, so all I've done, you can't see, of course, my hands. I've pressed the, the key P, and the, the P key on the computer keyboard is it will hide and show the nav mesh. Uh, so we're going to show the nav mesh. So at the moment, the nav mesh is only that small square there, so we want it to be bigger than that. Um, so I'm going to um, just scale this up. And a lot bigger. I'm going to bring it out in this direction as well. We basically want it to cover the whole of our level. Um, it's not quite wide enough yet. So... And also, it could do with a bit more height because at the moment, it comes up these stairs, but it doesn't actually give us the whole of the top of the stairs. So I'm just going to stretch that up. There we go. Now, you'll see with the nav mesh being displayed that there is actually an issue with getting uh, the character up these stairs um, in that um, the, the nav mesh being calculated doesn't work up the stairs, and that's because the stairs are a bit steep for it, and this is a little bit difficult. Um, uh, tell you what, uh, I'll show you how the nav mesh recalculates before I deal with the stairs. So if we move one of the objects around, it, whilst I'm holding on to it, it and letting it go, it goes red, but then it recalculates, and we can, it recalculates where you can go and where you can't go. So Okay, so let's deal with the stairs. We want the characters to be able to get up the stairs in a later video. Um, so there are a couple of things that we can do to actually improve the nav mesh generation of these stairs. Uh, so the first is that we're actually going to make the stairs shallower. So one of the problems is that the stairs are quite steep. The other problem is it's, it's kind of 
getting a problem with the top of the stairs and connecting to them. So I'm just going to use the scale to stretch these stairs out a bit. And so they line up. That's starting to look better. We've still got an issue there at the top of the stairs. <clears throat> and you'd think that the way to alter the way the nav mesh is being generated would be to find that nav mesh bounds uh, asset here. And if, but if you look in the uh, information down here, there doesn't seem to be anything useful. And in fact, there's another one in here, another actor, which is a recast nav mesh default. And it sneakily put that in, and that has uh, some of the parameters that we need. Uh, so the two that I'm going to mess with, I confess I am by no means an expert at setting up nav meshes and getting them right. Um, but if uh, the two that I've had a quick play with are the cell size and the cell height. Uh, so as the cell size goes higher, we check that at 30, you'll see that actually that means that the edges get thicker. Yeah. So we're going to reduce that down uh, to 10. It starts as a default as 19, uh, which gives us a bit more width up here as well, where it's um, towards the edges, because it kind of gives you a boundary near the edges uh, where the character won't go. And the other one I'm going to play with is the cell height, which um, actually if we get close down, we can see that it's kind of, this nav mesh is kind of floating above the ground, above the steps. And what we're going to do is we're going to raise that up so that it doesn't get so interfered with by this step. So instead of a cell height of 10, 20, uh, 10 let's try 20. That's actually not made it any better. Um, 60 is getting better. 70. There, that's connected through. So you can see on the stairs here it's connected through. It's actually raised up. It's higher up. But that does not matter as long as it's uh, reasonably within the height of the character that you're using. Um, it's got some weird effects at the bottom of the stairs, so it's going to be inter interesting to see what happens as a result. But well, let's um, just move this character and see if that calculates it. No, I didn't think it would, because the characters are movable, not a static. Um, so this might mean that the, um, the character attempts to come up uh, crazy bits off these edges here. Uh, let's go back and uh, have a look at see if we can deal with that with a recast nav mesh. So we've um, uh, we've taken we took down the cell size. I'm going to tweak that up to 15 and see if that helps. Yeah, not a great deal. Can we tweak anything else? Which is the principle of tweaking values to try and find something. That is, see now I've created a gap there, which is a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compromise and I'm going to just stretch these steps a little bit more just to hopefully make that a bit more amenable. Um, see how that recalculates. That looks more reasonable. It's probably not too unreasonable to be able to step up the science here. Okay. So in uh, the videos to come, I will be exploring how this nav mesh is used um, with a whole load of behavior stuff. But that's it from me for now. Thank you.